Hey, good night, everybody. Uh, welcome to Beyond Decoding Inspection. This is a program dedicated to uh, bring experts and having conversations about the coding industry worldwide. Uh, this program is called the Experts Voice Series, and today we will discuss a very important topic um, regarding master coding inspectors in Latin America. This one will be a introductory topic. It will be like the first one of a series where I will be joining my two experts peers here and inviting also other master coding inspectors and coding experts around the world. And the intention is to provide the audience with a very unique a conversation between peers, very, very relaxed conversations. As we are, let's say, on the field, we, we find ourselves on the field or at a conference and we start talking. So that's that's the way we, we would like to provide the audience with a very relaxed conversation. And well, for today, we have two coding experts here with us. Both of them are MCIs. Uh, we have a very interesting panel today. And one fact is that they are, uh, right now, there are only 59 uh, master coding inspectors around the world. Uh, there is approximately like seven, I think, that are international, like in Asia and uh, in, in Latin America, we are just three, and most of them are concentrated in North America, in, in the US and Canada. And the intention of this topic today is to understand uh, what is the, the meaning of a master coding inspector, the scope of a master coding inspector. And for this, we will be sharing with you some experiences and, and, and some knowledge that we have gathered through the years. So today, um, I would like to first introduce myself for those who don't, maybe don't know me yet, and then uh, my two colleagues will introduce themselves. Uh, well, my name is Juan Caballero. I'm industrial engineer. I am certified as a master coding inspector. Um, and and you will understand later uh, why master coding inspector is a certification that have a lot of certifications uh, involved. And well, I also AMPP senior coding inspector level three with marine and bridge uh, endorsement or specialty. And other than that, I'm also an international trainer for AMPP, Corroder, and other associations. And we will be talking about what are the traits that we share in common. And during the, the conversation, I ask the audience to ask some questions that you would like to us to, to answer today. And for future future uh, future episodes, so very welcome to everybody. And now I leave you with Jorge. Jorge, hey, how are you? What are you doing? Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, this is a very exciting conversation. I am very expecting about that. Um, well, I'm Jorge Reina. I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. Um, I'm I'm certified in three branches nowadays in welding and certified senior certified welding inspector by American Welding Society. Um, in NDT, non destructive testing, also was ASNT level three, nine methods uh, nowadays. And as MCI, recently MCI by M A M P P or AMP, I don't know how to say it, and uh, formerly SSPC. Um, I, I was actually also certified as uh, PCI level three and have some endorsement 
in concrete, in pipeline, fireproofing, for example, I also PCS. And well, this is, uh, I guess this is going to be a very interesting and very exciting conversation today. Yeah, for sure, Jorge. And thank you for introducing yourself and congratulations on all those certifications that, that you hold. So welcome, Felipe. Hello, everyone. Hello, Juan. Hello, Jorge. Hey, English is not my mother language, so I made a glue to help me in the episode. Thanks for inviting me for this master episode. I am, a, I am from Brazil, Porto Alegre. Uh, about my current job, I am a techno manager at two companies here in Brazil. One of them is Technofink, which is leader in composites, corrosion protection, and the pipeline repairs, and have a huge team here. The other company is Powerpox, uh, which is a polymer manufacturer. Powerpox is 100% Brazilian, a uh, Brazilian company with the best polymer technologies in the world and then we export the to more than 20 countries. Um, I have some code certifications in Brazil. I am code inspector level two. From SSPC, I am thermal spray inspector, concrete code inspector, QCS, PCS, and the MCI, the master code inspector. From NACE, I am NACE level three, with bridge and marine endorsement, PCS, and the OKT technician. From my part, I am code inspector, marine offshore level two. I have been working with painting since 2004, and I started my career working with the um, R&D painting laboratory. And then I worked with the code inspector for applicators, contractors, I worked in point manufacturer and I worked as a coating specifier too. This is Felipe Manasiuque. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you, Felipe. Very impressive as well. And I think the audience already noticing that a master coding inspector usually involves uh, different certifications and not only in coatings, but maybe in other areas like welding, NDT, and, and special linings and coatings as, as Felipe also deal with. So uh, just to explain a little bit to the audience today, we will be having an um, uh, expert panel that will consist of four rounds. Uh, the first round will be Two different questions to our to our guests, and I may jump in, in in some of those questions only if necessary. But then we will have another three rounds that will be the same questions to the to the expert. So we will start first with uh, Jorge, and it's very interesting, Jorge, as I say that there are. Only 59 master coding inspectors around the world currently, as I mentioned before, uh, just three for now in, in Latin America. But to start explaining the audience, like what is an MCI, what is an MCI certification, we first have to understand a little bit of history. So if you can let us know in your personal experience, uh, which is the master coding uh, certification industry uh, history? Well, the history, my history in as MCI. Well, uh, the first time that I hear about the MCI certification was probably my first formal um, uh, training with SSPC. The, the, the first two formal trainers that I've been in contact was uh, you, Juan, and uh, Pepe Valdez uh, from Mexico. Pepe Valdez was probably the first MCI in Latin America. No, 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 in Mexico. I don't know in Latin America probably was uh, Felipe right now or, or you, Juan. I don't know. But uh, that was the first time that I uh, realized that this kind of certification exists. Um, 
then I think, okay, uh, I thought, okay, this is very interesting. This is a, a, a real challenge and I would like to try it. So I started to develop me, uh, my, my career on codings. I was, uh, I made a lot of coding inspections before, but uh, just once I took this training course, I, I can say, okay, I began to make it things really on the right way you know then um i tried to to grade my my level three pci and then i say okay what's next because i really like this part of the industry and i really think there's a very deep need of uh, certified personal and professionals in latin america about uh, coding inspections and not just coding inspection because, uh, okay, probably the MTI is master coding inspector, but there's a lot of uh, things and other thing, things like the PCS, for example, that complements very well the process and the knowledge, the body knowledge of an MCI. So I decide to go for this uh, certification and I finally graded this year actually it was it's very recently maybe uh, one or two months ago that finally amp gave me the good word and sent me my a picture of my certificate so uh, I, I think this is a a very exciting way to to be involved in this industry of coding inspections yeah, I, I I remember the day that you got it, Jorge. You sent me the good news, and I I was really uh, I feel a great emotion myself because uh, thank you. I I really appreciate when my my colleagues uh, had this success, and and it's about that that we we share a lot of our our willingness and an experience with other peers, so they can also advance in the industry. Yes, I really appreciate it. And actually, probably you was the first person that uh, that I sent this this uh, this message with my card, the photo of my card. Okay, finally, I got it. And yeah. yes, yes, I, I, I really feel very appreciated about that. Yeah, I, I, think... I don't know yes, if you how you received the the letter, but I remember SSPC had a beautiful way to send the letter with a letter uh, right by my hand a oh, beautiful really? oh, yeah no. <laughs> I, I have i i have saved my letter it's very beautiful because it's yeah. not so formal now you receive an email with your certificate it that's okay and you receive something right by hand thanks congratulations you you deserve that it's you this impact you when you saw that <laughs> yeah actually, felipe no, I, I, I really received actually just uh an email an email with a photo of my card and a photo of my certificate and the passing letter the grade letter and that's it but probably i don't know i, I hope i'm gonna receive this maybe a couple of weeks but yeah th th this time um this that moment when i received the email from the AMP staff uh, was very exciting. Yeah, you, you both have made me remind when I receive uh, my letter that maybe maybe it's a top secret, but I, 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 I got a little tear on my eye <laughs> <laughs> of happiness. <laughs> so yes, I, I, um, I think that Jorge mentioned some good points about the MCI certification and maybe part of the audience, I, I can see that there are some other MCIs here in us today, and I highly appreciate that you joined us and support us with this broadcast. Um, but to tell the long story short, um, I think it was around 2005 that SSPC uh, detect a flow in the industry about concrete coatings, and they developed the CCI a concrete coding inspector program and then around 2007 
they also developed the bridge coding inspector program. And they were kind of building uh, like a core a set of courses um, that focus in, in each specialty industry. And then uh, in the US, they also have the N NBPI that is more like for the Navy. But as the international community start to grow, um, they realize that the only way that international uh, professionals can obtain the certification was through another high level training. And, and that's when the PCS come in place. So for, for the audience, uh, those who, who maybe don't know, to, to get a master coding uh, inspector certification, you need to have CCI is the, the, the main one, I will say, and you need to have other two certifications. Like for me, it was PCI level, well, I, I obtained the PCI level three and the PCS level three. So um, uh, as Jorge said, when, when I heard about the master coding inspector certification, I was looking to reinforce myself into the concrete industry. And that's what kind of hooked me up. And, 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 and when I did the, the training about concrete coding inspector, I realized that there is a lot of information, a lot of experience to pass by in this type of training and really had helped me a lot. And, and, and I think I first, I went uh, after the master coding inspector, just because as Jorge said, I, I want to become better and better and better each day and don't, and don't stop st studying and don't stop uh, training myself and advancing in the industry. And I think this is one of the traits that most of the MCIs uh, share together because I, I have talked also with other colleagues uh, that also hold the MCI certification. And, and, and I think this is a common, common trait that we share. So Felipe, uh, the next, next question is for you. So we have the MCI certified professionals. Uh, we already have a comment here with the audience that is a highly trained professional, highly skilled. Um, most of the MCIs usually have a, a great source of experience in the field. But in your own experience, um what is the goal what is the goal after looking for a master coding uh, inspector certification well uh, the goal of the mci program uh, is to recognize and honor inspectors that uh, whose experience and the training has afforded uh, then the prestige of a good inspector certification related to cohesion protection this was the main goal of the program. FSPC, when created the program, wanted to recognize and respect the, the, the inspector's commitment and dedication to the industrial sector to maintain professional qualifications. Everyone knows here that it's so hard to get the certifications, but maintaining certifications is hard and expensive in itself. If you have a lot of certifications, you have uh, to maintain the certi certifications and uh, pay uh, in a frequency the certifications, and which is why many people is of these people are so widely respected. So as SPC created the MCI program at no cost to recognize these inspectors that have a lot of certifications and they keep the certifications. This was the the real goal of the program. Yes, and, and it's very, very interesting all that you mentioned because it's something that we also uh, share a lot together and, and, and we yeah. have discussed this many times. Jorge, something you, you want to add additional to what Felipe uh, mentioned? I think us? Felipe say everything. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, yeah. well he's, I, I, in, in my personal way in my personal uh, about the mci well this is a on one hand this is a very prestigious certification it's very exclusive and mm. this is not this kind of exclusively that you got paying you need to pay but in, in effort you know you need to study a lot you need to uh, um, share experience you need to have a I, I think a professional profile to meet with this certification and in my case well it's an honor to be in this group of mcis yeah of course and 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 i think that kind of take us to to our next our next question um i think that uh, maybe we have mentioned it through the discussion uh but i feel that uh, these traits that we share in common together have led us to become more than peers i i would say friends or brothers in the industry and and mostly uh i think that pursuing this objective and and you know having these common goals has even take us to collaborate not not only in the um, like in in information but also in in some job opportunities and project collaborations and looking forward to to know more about other industries but additional to what we have told so far what additional drivers you think that keeps an MCI motivated to continue seeking for more knowledge, for more information, and to obtain higher uh, levels of certifications? Maybe Jorge, can can you start yes, first? The drivers that motivated me. Uh, well, I don't know. Um... First of all, probably is because I really like to study a lot and this kind of certification requests us to study a lot and be active, you know, because um, this kind of industry is constantly in movement and you need to maybe be updated sometime and uh, things change it. And next year, for example, um, you need to visit a lot this kind of events for example that made in the us the united states and uh, probably also share this kind of information not to share maybe just uh, like if i have the book i borrow or i lend to you uh, it's probably to share the knowledge okay like in a teaching a course a training course for example or probably during the projects when people ha has sometimes any idea about what they are trying to do and you you can advise them so this kind of uh teaching uh process or that is also a continuous learning process is like a continuous improvement process uh, motivates me a lot to to grade last uh, MCI and I really don't know but probably if there is another uh, certifications beyond MCI I probably got it or try to got it yeah and I Jorge that that makes me remember that we have a conversation the other day we you were uh, um, here in Panama that we were talking about like our hobbies and everything and and we we were talking like okay maybe part of our hobbies is uh, studying instead of maybe racing cars or every all hobbies are okay but i think that mcis uh, have in common that their hobbies are uh, a lot have to deal with studying <laughs> Yes, pr pr probably, probably more than study is uh, like a habit, you know, yeah, like a habit. continuous right. learning process. Because yeah. sometimes people think about um, uh, 
a studying is a process that you need to be uh, in a table to sit in a chair and open the book and continue to read and make notes and okay but um probably for us or for a lot of professionals as mcis for example that i uh, really think is the same thing probably with felipe is a continuous um need for information okay it's like be hungry for books and read a lot and be continuous uh updating or skills yeah yeah it's, it's Look, like some Lose some, hours, lose some hours of sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so what, are, what about you, Felipe? What are your drivers that keep you motivated? Well, uh, uh, the motivator is, for me, is related to your professional development. You know that to get the MSI certification, you need to have multiple certifications as an uh, inspector. And MCI is Garrett Art at a highly high trained and experienced professionals. When you get a certification, we get the other, and you can see the MCI on the top, and you are looking the other certifications. Uh, people who certify as MCI are on top of their professional and they have dedicated significant time to improve their knowledge. That was who the last talk we were talking now. And you also want to be on top of the knowledge. You want to, to study to achieve that. And the professionals of industry seek a professional recognition, primarily because they want to increase their reputation, credibility, and trust, and uh, to have a respect earned because, uh, for their effort, efforts. I remember when I read an article uh, by you, Juan Cavalero, on LinkedIn, uh, mm -hmm. the name is Award of Passion for the Protective Coatings. And one can send it, can share the link later. And he uh, will talk about uh, his achievements, how he became the first MCI in Latin America. And the most important for me, what was motivating more people to have this certification. For me, this is important to share knowledge, to help the other people achieve the certification. For me, this uh, uh, is a, a good profile that to have <laughs> uh, yeah. to share the knowledge. Uh, and now, and it worked. You, you could get, because now, five years later, I am here <laughs> with you, and uh, you are here. And you didn't know that I read that article, but that article motivated me too. I also wanted to be a better person for the industry. I want. To, I also wanted to seek top certifications. And ah, what is this? This certification? Who is who? He's invited me. He's invited everyone to to help with the knowledge with other things. I will check what is that. And I had a plan for my life in the certifications. Now I turned with the my life but i had i started with the some certification and the desire to learn more to learn something new motivate me and today after have this certification i can also motivate to other people in the same way that you motivated the people that even know what is uh mci and you even if you don't know that you will achieve people that you don't know now you know that uh, I read, but at that time you didn't know that I could be reading that article. And it is motivate me that you can you can uh, learn more uh, and share what you are, are learning. And this for me is the main motivation. Yes, and I am I am really very honored that with some of my articles, I, I was able to, to motivate you. And I think uh, this is my main driver and my biggest reward in the industry is to be able to motivate others. And, and I can say here that um, I'm also feel motivated by you, Felipe, by you, Jorge, and by other peers 
because I know that every time I I have some some questions, some doubts about maybe some topic that I don't fully manage or it's not my day to day. Like you, Felipe, you are very deep in piping, corrosion. Jorge is very highly certified in welding, NDT as well. So I I always have a peer that I know that I can go to, and that also motivates me a lot to have peers that can can help me in 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 some instance. And I I really really appreciate having you as a colleagues, as friends, and and brothers in the industry. So, yeah, okay, let's go to our third round or or third question for for you will be um, okay, this is a very good one. So there are different scenarios that we as professionals in the coding industry can face, maybe in a project, maybe in it, it doesn't have to be in a project, maybe in an owner's office, uh, during a meeting or uh, different scenarios that put our, our training, put our experience or knowledge into action. So what will be, uh, in your opinion, uh, or, or a case that you can mention of some practical uh, experience that you have to have in the field where you have to use the MCI values and the MCI vision. An example of real life that that you can share with the audience. Jorge, you go first. Oh, well, <laughs> probably this is a continuous dealing with project because this, this is a daily issue because, uh, you know, at least in Mexico, this... Uh, this uh, concept of pain the specification, for example, or basic inspector credentials or basic training for uh, surface preparation uh, in people or for painters or applicators, um, uh, this is sometimes not... Uh, not the first thing that the owner of the project or the manager of the project think about that. Okay, yeah. so for me, for my experience, based on my experience in projects, at least in Mexico, um, I need to convince a lot of people every day to try to do the things in a probably not in the right way, but <laughs> in a better way, you know? Yeah, you okay, for example, I'm went to a project last week, there's any paint specifications, people doesn't know about the profile, surface, the, the preparation, kind of preparation that they need to meet. They doesn't know about the kind of paint, the testings, uh, you know, it's, it's a constant thing, deal with this kind of structural things that we need to, uh, because this is not a training, this is the real life. And, yeah. and people are working in a project that is ruining right now. So I, I need to 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 teach a lot people on the way and say, okay, well, first of all, you need to have a specification. Okay, you have any specification. Okay, let's see what we can do. I, I, I don't want to write a specification for you now when you are asking to read a dry film testing um how, how do you apply this coding how did you prepare the surface so there's a lot of things uh that an mci could leave in a project okay mm -hmm. and at least in my experience I, I we can okay give an example and uh, i don't know um probably say or tell the all the actors involved in this kind of projects, how to do the things in the right way, you know? And, and this happens a lot in Mexico. Jorge, you, you will not believe 
I was ma making my little notes before starting this live, and I had the same thing you you have mentioned right now. So, but let's let Felipe go go first. Uh, well, uh, some case when we have challenge projects, uh, it's common for the owner look for highly qualified professionals, and I remember. Uh, Someone called me and uh, asked some question if I could help. And the situation was to evaluate uh, several paint systems in a thermoelectric plant that for some reason had uh, a few different paint systems applied in the equipment and that was not in the specification, both in concrete uh, and steel. And the point system apply were actually better than the point system specified. And the equipment of the plant can paint it from around a lot of parts of the road. And the owner want to approve that I could, I could do the job. And the biggest concern about was about the applying the concrete inside the plant mm. and I remember when I got the MCI certification the CTKFF uh, had an homenage for me very beautiful homenage and I sent the link to the owner and oh, you can check this certification is about uh, recognize when you have some certification concrete that you are uh, you are worried about and uh, Quote is spectrum for steel too. You can see, and it was look the the link it was check with the people from SSPC what was MCI, and he called me. That's mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. When we can start, <laughs> only because of the MCI certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's good yeah. because the owner was like was so nervous because of the situation, and after that it was okay. We can plan our our job because a lot of people involved. We can plan our, our job. Now we we can do the job. Yeah, I think that's that's amazing example for Felipe. And I I I will I I have very similar experience to you. So I will just add that about what what you have mentioned. Uh, maybe in my experience. I have faced it where my MCI values have become, you know, afloat and I'm trying to to keep everything going forward. Is is when in any project or any situation, the the right thing to do is not the like the popular decision to make. So oh, yeah. sometimes you as an MCI have to to come forward, make the step forward to make the things right in a project because sometimes there are different situations, but maybe sometimes um, the contractor don't have like enough experience or don't have a certified personnel on staff and they, you know, don't, don't know fully how to handle some situations or some process. <laughs> according to international standards. And when you try to guide them, um, it's kind of not very, very popular or very easy to do the process or, or, or if, for example, they have to do a corrective action sometimes. And even in some instance, um, when owners maybe don't, don't know exactly how to interpret some part of the specification or different oh, yeah. scenarios. But when, where, where I, what I want to, to call here is that an MCI also has to step in and, and step in to correct things, to do the right thing. And even if not the, 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 maybe you will not be like the most popular person in the project, <laughs> eventually, uh, the owner, the contractor, and everybody involved in the project will say thanks because they they will avoid uh, some uh, failure or some uh, rework or some delays in the project that 
maybe in fair instance they cannot see. So I think that's um, a very particular situation about an MCI. Yes, uh, I think for like uh, MCI, you not have the final decision, but yeah. it's related that you study a lot, you know where you can find uh, the sources that we can find to solve the problem. And because no one will get the MCI if you not study, if you not, not have knowledge. And this help to, to understand the project, to solve a problem in the project or in a specification or in evaluating a failure in the coding. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. that's, that's correct. So, um, well, we are reaching now our, our last question. Uh, is the, the final round of questions to our expert panel of master coding inspectors. And we have talked a lot about the history of the MCI, the drivers, what motivated you to, you know, keep going forward educating yourself, training yourself, and, and become becoming every time a better person, a better professional. But what's next now for the Mexican, <coughs> the Brazilian, and the Panamanian MCIs? What's next, Jorge? Jorge, you are, you are mute. Oh, thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. here in Monterey, actually, it's raining right now. And this is, this is great because we have a very long time without the rain in Monterey. So the sound of the rain outside my house, I, I have actually a, a window very close to me. And it makes a lot of sound. It's pretty louder right now. So I turn off my microphone. <laughs> Uh, what's next? Okay, this was a very interesting question because um, probably my family right now doesn't want, <laughs> doesn't want like that I continue making certification because, you know, this is a hard process. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. for me, uh, because I, I'm involved in welding and involved in NDTs, so I took a lot of testings and exams, certification exams uh, on the last 10 years. So I, I really don't know. I, I really would like to keep in improving my skills. I would like to visit more countries, uh, probably to develop uh, in a better way the skills that I have right now. Probably, uh, uh, I don't know be better in English or in other languages because this is a very important communication skill. And I don't know, this year I had the opportunity to share uh, a little bit of this uh, experience and at the AMP event in San Antonio it was in March, right? So yeah. this was very excited for me. I, I was very excited about that because um, this was the first time that I uh, made a, a workshop. And actually, thanks again, Juan, you helped me a lot. And actually, Arturo Escobedo from, from Trilict. Uh, probably I would like to, to continue with that, uh, participating in this kind of international events and probably making some investigation. I, I really interesting about make, investigate about things and find solutions for uh, actual problems or find solutions for uh, future problems. Yeah, that's huge, Jorge. The area of investigation is something that um, we need to approach also as professionals in the industry. And um, I share that motivation with you. I have been uh, learning a little bit about more into getting deeper into the investigation area. So congratulations yes. for that. But by the other side, this kind of uh, interactions, uh, this this example, we are three of us today uh, 
sharing this for people that probably are interesting in get involved in this uh, area of coatings or probably had a curiosity about what, what, what is an MCI, uh, how another uh, professional could grade this MCI or something. So, uh, so this, um, this is a good idea, this kind of initiative to, to talk each other and share yeah. information. Yeah, that's correct. So what about you, Felipe? What's next for the... The max MCI? Yeah. <laughs> the max MCI from Brazil, first we need to understand if MP will keep this certification, the recognizement. <laughs> this is the, the first thing. I think that we can show to MP that is good for the inspector. Um, but here, um, I want to leave a, a final message, mainly, mainly for the professionals in Brazil. Yeah, but we can't uh, get where we want. We, if you, you can, if you want to get the MSI certification, you can easily. I could, if you, I could, everyone can. Uh, only to need to study, and we only learn and conquer our goals when we fight for it, and we learn when participate in courses, seminar, webinar. And we have technical contact like us with trained professional in our area. It's not related only to I will take a course and I can get the MSI. You need to be involved with the area. You need to be involved course, seminar, other things. Professionals cannot waste opportunities to learn more and more. Learning is a constant every day in our, in our lives. Uh, this is what... Uh, enrich our arsenal of knowledge. And I want to take advantage to, of this moment and invite everyone to CIPRA 2022 from 6 to 8 of December 2022. Uh, you can enter in the website of CIPRA. CIPRA is the one of the largest corrosion protection events in Latin America that will be held by CTKFF in Rio de Janeiro. It's a good opportunity to get knowledge, to learn more. In this event, will be courses, will be uh, technical presentations of high quality. It's a good opportunity. And you uh, and uh, George are invited to, to go there. And uh, George, uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate. And the Primo, thanks for the opportunity for the opportunity to be here with you. And I think that we can uh, be more together. You can be here in Cipra, and maybe you can uh, palestrate here too. You are invited. <laughs> Fragata invited you too. <laughs> you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And you throw us a very tempting invitation. So we yeah. will make. All efforts to join you with Jorge. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just for uh, closing, um, we have some some questions from from the audience. Let me check on that real quick. Uh, we have here from for for Prima Cara Blitzwick. Cara, <laughs> what is the bigger problem? owner education or individual certification? Who wants to take that one? Oh, wow, that's a good one. Uh, probably, in my opinion, just in my personal and professional opinion, I, I think this owner. This owner education, um, okay, I don't know, because, um, it's important to know that owner need to ask about some skills in their equipment, in their stuff. And if this kind of skills or learning is not present, or this kind of process is not present, probably the owner needs to find uh, the way uh, to, 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 to got it. Okay. So probably the first, okay. 
for example, based on my experience as instructor in NDT and welding uh, branches, the the greatest way to uh, have a successful um, certification program starts at the facility. Probably the people doesn't go to the training course just to learn all the training body, all the training uh, scope, um, and then make a test and pass. They need to have a very good background based on experience and based on a learning, previously learning process. So I think it's uh, probably better to share this kind of inf information with the owners and then going to ask to another people, to their staff, probably to their employees, to their uh, subcontractors, uh, which kind of skills and which kind of certification and which kind of, um, uh, I don't know, learning they need or knowledge or experience they need to have. It's a good question. Uh, first, if in, in our field, if you not have a certification, we could not get a job in our field. At the same time, uh, people with a lot of knowledge uh, without certification can get, uh, I know a lot of people. That could be a lot of levels without certification. But for us, uh, we need to get certification to achieve some jobs. Uh, when you, uh, like uh, sometimes, you need to prove that uh, what you are telling with a certification. If you have certification, your word is right, and if you not have, it's not right. And this is unfair for me. I, I remember when I started in, in my area, in coaching, I didn't have a, a certification. After I had my first certification, oh, I, I am another person. The people look at me different. The second certification, oh, oh, now I can talk better with the people. And uh, it's stranger because you are the same person. With the, you are uh, learning, learning, but you are the same person. But if you have a certification, the people look at you different. Oh, you have this certification, you are better than the other. Uh, for me, it's unfair because a lot of people doesn't have, I know a lot of people that could be, could be here with us. It doesn't have any certification. Yeah, and I, I can summarize that, Felipe, in that you become an expert because uh, you you need, obviously you need the experience from the field, but when you certificate, you validate your knowledge and your experience in the field by a third party institution that acknowledge you as an expert. So and 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 you are recognized uh, through uh, the bigger associations uh, as an expert worldwide. So this this is I think one of the main reasons that I recommend all our peers as possible to to certify because in my own experience it was the same that he, that Felipe has mentioned right now. Uh, when I start, I have no certifications, but when I start to certify myself, I realize that a lot of things that I learned from the way it has been done like for 30 years in the industry, uh, maybe not all of them were correct or, or maybe not all of them were the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I highly recommend that every professional involved in this area to start becoming uh, trained, certified. And I think Jorge and Felipe mentioned earlier that uh, you can start with taking webinars. Um, you can start by, you know, buying a book and reading a book, but there are some sorts of, of other, other uh, ways that you can um, educate yourself. And just as a closing statement, um, I would like to mention that um, 
I will I will be uh, posting our next episode. Uh, we have we would like to hear from the audience which topics you would like us to cover. And I also would like to mention that I will be uh, posting some pre-recorded uh, episodes that I had mm -hmm. with other MCIs. When I went to some conference, we sit down and pre-record. So there, these are a shorter versions on a specific yeah. topics, but are very, very interesting. And also uh, mention to the audience that I will be um, having a new segment that will be in LinkedIn audio. It is called a uh, coding talk, but it will be in Spanish. So it will be called Hablemos de Recubrimientos, where we will be uh, having some invites as well, but all of it will be over voice, kind of a more of a, um, a podcast type a podcast. of, yeah, podcast, but on LinkedIn. So I am willing to everybody join us in this conversation with some peers, colleagues, and friends, experts from the industry that we will be inviting. And I highly appreciate. Uh, our audience. We had a good audience today and we look forward to have you in our next episodes. So thank you again, Felipe and Jorge, to yeah. accept the invitation and you have been uh, the best uh, guest that, uh, that I, can, I can have in this broadcast. Thanks, Thank everyone. you so much. I really enjoyed that. This this was a very very helpful uh, talk. Um, I hope this is not going to be the first. Is 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 the first, but not the the Enough. only one. This yeah. continue. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And well, this is a very interesting uh, talk because, as I told you probably last week on a Spanish conversation, I don't know, in Latin America, there's 667,000 people. Yes, I say it well. 667,000 people. And just three MCIs, this is pretty interesting, at least on, on, on my way to think. So thank you guys. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great night. See you. Bye.